I have finally, finally finished my box joint jig machine thing for my table saw. It's currently in beta, there's certainly a lot to be improved, but let me show you around. So the whole thing is on a table saw, albeit a very small one, it's cordless after all. Saw blade goes up in here, we've got some runners here. This sled therefore moves along the runners, which means it's running perfectly with the blade there. This is the box joint jig part of this. This is actually modular, so the jig can come off and I can put different fences on, which is good because plywood is very expensive at the moment, since a lot of it comes from Russia. This is the machine from the other side, from, I guess you could say, the operator's side. And these are the electronics. In here is a Raspberry Pi Pico and a stepper motor driver. And we've got a few buttons, which I'll show in a bit. Up and down buttons for increasing and decreasing the finger width. And a little happy face for basically the OK button. Got a couple of end stops over here, and then one on the other side. These are basically so that the carriage, which is this section, which is going to move left to right, which means it's going to be uh, perpendicular to the blade. That's so the end stops so that the machine knows when it's hit the limits. This is the starting one. So when this carriage is moved all the way across to the left, the limit switch will hit, and in theory, this will be perfectly aligned. And the machine knows that. When it hits this limit switch, it means the carriage has gone all the way across to that side, and therefore the machine knows it can't go any further, and it quits the program. Of course, chances of cutting boards that are all of that width, quite slim. What's the goal of this machine? Essentially, to make finger joints or box joints. It looks something like these. These are earlier test cuts. And what these are, basically we can see the wood grain going along here. The saw will cut out the gaps in these. But because the grain itself is going to carry along, it's got all the strength of the wood grain, because that's the strong part of wood. And then when it fits together, I'm doing it off centre because after all this was a test cut. And I'm doing one handed. When it fits together, there's a lot of surface area for the glue to attach to, which makes this a very strong joint. What this machine will do, I'll take this apart, is we put the boards in vertically, which means that the blade will be cutting these slots. The machine will move it left or right to position it for the new slots. The blade, you can see, has a certain thickness. The cut it cuts in, the thickness of that cut is called a curve. So what we can basically do is if we know the width of this blade, we know the minimum finger gap we can make. So we can only go bigger than that. In this case, the blade's curve is three millimeters. So we can't make fingers smaller than three millimeters, but we can make them bigger by doing additional cuts before we move on past the finger along to the next gap. This machine will do the, the amount of how much do I need to turn for each time. Essentially, this is a threaded rod, much like a long screw without a head or such. And this particular screw, uh, threaded rod, it's an M10, which means it's a metric uh, 10, mil, 10 millimeters in diameter. That has a pitch of 1.5, which means that one full rotation is 1.5 millimeters, which means two full rotations is three millimeters, which is the same as the curve of the blade. So for instance, if we wanted to make fingers of three millimeters thick, we would do a cut, move this forwards and backwards, press a button on the machine, that would then move it along 
three millimeters to the next to the start of the finger sticking out itself as we've now created one of the gaps and then it will move it along the full width of that finger to get to the starting position of the next gap if it was a finger of six millimeters it would do you would do a cut push a button it will move the whole carriage across three millimeters you do another cut which means you now have a gap of six millimeters you push the button and then it will move along to the starting position of the next finger which would basically leave a six millimeter area of that is uncut which is what the finger will be so you would end up and then you repeat the process so you'd have a gap of six millimeters a finger of six millimeters and then another gap of, of six millimeters and rinse and repeat simple enough to do if you have the right tools to do it i'm just going to make the depth of cuts correct so simply put my bit of wood next to the blade next to the highest point of the blade and we've got a crank for it to raise and lower the blade and then i just lower it down until it's a bit beyond you don't want to go for exactly because nothing ever works out exactly a bit less than that and then it'll just mean that the fingers themselves will stick out a little proud and they can be trimmed off afterwards. What I've got is a cordless power tool battery. That's how I power it, currently at least. I can replace the battery connector, but right now I'm using this one. The stepper motor driver can take a few different voltages and then there's a little voltage regulator that brings it down to the power of the Raspberry Pi. So we can see we're not all the way across yet. We haven't hit the end, we haven't hit the switch. And there's still a gap here. So let's turn it on. Okay. Select your finger width. Currently I've got it set so the default is six millimeters. I can go up or down pressing it the wrong other way. It won't go smaller than the predefined curve of the blade. So if I went all the way down to 300 millimeters, it won't go further than that. I'm gonna go back to six millimeters. All right, so now I push the button and things will start happening. Right, so what happened there is it rotated the, the motor, which is a stepper motor, it goes in steps, so one step is one two hundredth of a turn, so two hundred steps is one full rotation. It went all the way until it hit that switch. It backed off a bit and then it did the same thing slowly. So it is, in theory, in the right place. If it needs adjusting, we can see that the limit switch itself is in this little slot, which means I can loosen these, adjust it slightly, put it back in the right place, which, to be clear, is a pain in the bum. But do it please. Right, so the instruction now says Put in boards, do not clamp, then press OK. I'm going to put in my boards, as it says. I'm going to hold them, push them down into the, the base of the machine. And then, when I'm ready, push OK. So we can see there's now a gap in between the two things. And these are long boards. This is stop, clamp, then press OK. So basically, if you had them all four, if you're making a square box or rectangular box, if you had all four cuts starting at the same point, then things wouldn't actually align. You want to offset some of the boards, what I'm calling the long boards, though these test pieces are the same length, so it doesn't matter. You want to offset some of them 
by one finger width. So let me do that. Great. So now we can see the boards are parallel to each other, but one is slightly offset. And now, as the instruction says, I'm going to clamp. And there we go. It's now firmly attached to the carriage. If I push this button again, it will move back to the starting position. And now it's time to cut. I'm going to put my PPE on. This provides both eye and lung protection at the same time. I can turn the saw on and start cutting. And to perform a cut, you just slide the table saw sled forwards and backwards, and then push a button. The machine will move itself into the next position to perform the same process. So you can see me hitting the button, and it's going to skip two spaces for the next part of the finger, and then cut. Press the button again, it just moves. And that's really it. This is all real-time footage of operating the machine. Does everything for me except push it forwards and backwards. In theory, could even get some sort of contraption to deal with that. But, I mean, that's beyond the scope of this project, shall we say. Now, just there, we saw the carriage, we see it wobbling around a little bit, but we saw the carriage and therefore the wood attached to the carriage lean back slightly when it's being cut. I'm going to make another video about that. That results in some of the angles not being quite 90 degrees. Close to, but not quite. I'll talk more about that later on. tear out on the back, but let's see. Oh, that's quite satisfying. So there were a few issues with this, although we can we can see there's slight gaps there. Essentially, the wood itself is a little bit bowed. While this is allegedly joinery grade pine. It is only from a builder's merchant rather than a hardwood store. So we can see that the wood itself is slightly warped, slightly curved. So it doesn't quite fit together perfectly for that reason. But I think we can allow that to be ignored. The fit is pretty good. It's a little bit tight perhaps, but I can adjust for that in the code. The edges do not quite feel flush. You can see when my thumb is rubbing over, that's largely due to the wood being warped again. Now another issue is that the cut is not quite perfectly 90 degrees. Now I'm going to make a separate video about that. Of course I'm trying to show this to the camera as if I actually get it at a decent angle. I don't get it at a decent angle. Take my word for it, it's slightly off 90 degrees. Essentially we can see from the footage of the from the GoPro that sometimes the carriage slightly deflects when the cut is being performed. And that's essentially due to lack of support behind the material in that area. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. That was my very first test cut with the machine operating itself. The test cuts at the other end were from a previous iteration where it was entirely hand cranked. But overall, pretty satisfied. There's going to be a bit more work to do on this, but it is pretty much usable as is. The MicroPython code on the Raspberry Pi Pico, this is pretty much my first attempt at coding at this level, and I'm sure it is terrible, but I will make the code available on GitHub, along with more information on the parts. But for now, take care.